hey, 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 yes, that vibe be that, that vibe be that. Uh, that is an amazing uh, piece by Juma B, and it featured nice on that. In fact, that one, put a ring on it. Yes, <laughs> and uh, like I said, we're going to be talking to Juma B uh, via Skype. Uh, he's one very, very interesting uh, Nigerian artist, and he has a story to tell uh, regarding the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Hello, Juma B. How you doing? I did, my brother. Hi, they go longest time. I'm I mean, I don't see. <laughs> Hi, your side. Hi, your side, my brother. I see that you are you, you are sweating a lot. What happened? What what have you been up to? Plus, I do... workout. At... Oh, I work out every morning. Every morning exercise. Yeah. Oh, so we called in the midst of your workout. Yes. I had to abandon it, man, which I hardly do. Hmm. Oh, hmm. is this something that just started now, or something that started after surviving COVID? Now, after all, I don't want to hear a story. I'm trying to boost my immunity. I'm not playing. Wow. 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 Okay, so, so uh, Jumabi, run us through this, uh, this, this situation that happened. Because a lot of people in Nigeria still don't believe that uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic is real. Because they are saying we're not seeing uh, people come out to talk about it. People are not saying, okay, I've survived. So now that you are uh, a living testimony, can you just run us through how it happened for you and how you were able to, you know, to come out of it? Okay, um, before, before I left Nigeria, I actually had malaria. Okay. So I treated it, I was fine. Well, um, every morning for the past two years, I actually, I'm, I'm quite addicted to multivitamins because as a man, you need, to, your immunity has to be on the high side. Mm -hmm. So um, I travel with my, with my malaria drugs as well, and I travel with my vitamins. So when I got here, after like two weeks, um, I started feeling the minor symptoms of malaria again. Okay. So I thought it was because I switched the environment that malaria was resurfacing. So I started using my malaria medication. Well, after five days, the symptoms were still same. It was actually getting worse. Mm -hmm. Then um, the temperature was getting so high. Then my headache, you know, when it's like 10 people are pounding with mortar and pestle in your head. Mm. It was quite constant. Then I was like, okay, this is getting real. Then I, I went to the pharmacy, I got um, to the store, I got paracetamol again. But there was still no result. So I think on the seventh day or thereabout, I, 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 I said about 3 a.m., I couldn't breathe anymore. Mm. Mm. Yeah, my lungs were blocked. That was when I knew there was a problem. So I screamed for my friends to come out of their own room. Mm -hmm. So one of them came and was like, ah, this is getting serious. So we had to call 111. Now, on calling 111, it took them a while to pick. When they eventually picked, they asked one of my friends to, to perform CPR on me, and he shouldn't let me go. He should pull his hands on my chest, press it constantly until they come. When they eventually came, they said they were very sorry that they received nothing less than 16,000 calls in a day. Wow. You know, so they're under pressure as well. You know, a pandemic that has no cure yet, everybody's confused. So if in this Western um, world, they are finding it difficult to curtail, how, what will happen in my own country? That's what I was just thinking. Mm. But I knew I was going to survive because my immunity was high. I've always known that. Then when they came, because of my breath, I had to, the hospitals were choked. The first thing they will tell you is, it's advisable you stay home and isolate from home. Because if you, what are you going to the hospitals to do? Not like they're going to treat you. Yes. Even the paracetamol, they will, you, they will tell you at four hours interval, um, make sure you take two doses of paracetamol, then like um, the minimum of four glasses of water every day. So when, what, what are you going to the hospital for? Where well, there are no drugs. But because of my uh, breath, um, they took me to the hospital. I was stabilized after like three days. The environment wasn't pleasant at all. Because mm. now let's assume as a youth, you have more strength to conquer it. Then when you get to the hospital, probably the next person on the right side of your bed is an elderly person who has probably given up. On the left side, you wake up, that person has died. Hmm. As, I did, as I, four days ago, they still reported 702 deaths here. The mortality is so high beyond human human thinking. Hmm. And you know, so I requested from coming back home, they put me in, um, in an ambulance, brought me back to the house to isolate from home. Now, here's the thing. On isolating, I discovered that even the prostamol wasn't working effectively because the same things were still happening. The only difference before they took me was I could breathe normally, but I couldn't sit, I couldn't stand, I couldn't lie. The pain all over your body, I see they are pressing needle through your system. Hmm. Wow. Okay, so I think on the 10th day, so an, an uncle of mine here in London survived it as well. So he called me that I should get before. There's a thing called, let me look for it for you guys. Before, okay. before. Wow. Okay, so just, before. just so we, you know, put it out there, what country are you in? I'm in London. You're in London. Okay. 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 
So this is this is vapor rub. Mm -hmm. so you steam it or steam it with this every morning and night. Um, I'll drop um, I'll drop inside water, uh, burning with steaming water. So yeah. when it steams, I'll, I'll cover my head with a duvet for like 15 minutes. So when I inhale, it goes through to my lungs and spreads around my system. Mm -hmm. So it allows to breathe. Mm -hmm. Then um, this is um, all bums oil. Mm -hmm. And what this does is when you are in the bathtub, you fill it with the warm water. Then you sprinkle like five drops in the warm water and stay there for at least 20 minutes. Wow. That's what it took for. So I was using this, but I didn't stop at this. Every morning and night, I had ginger, lemon, garlic, and a bit of honey. Hmm. So I did that every morning and night. So I'll mix it or slice it for me. I did that for 10 days. Now, let me now show you. The 11th day, I was still feeling worse. Hmm. Then I told myself at this point, man, if I do these things, I'm still feeling this way. Then I, 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 needed, I needed to take my attention off the ailment itself and focus more on my emotions. Because now it has been scientifically and medically proven that when you are scared, the virus will compress your immunity and you will find it difficult to survive it. Yes. Hmm. So because the mind, the mind is like the brain box of the car. The mind controls everything that makes you human. Yes. So I took my mind off the whole virus thing and I'm like, you know what? I'm a strong man. My fans are waiting for me back home. My family are waiting for me, my friends. Then I need to be good for my own self. Mm -hmm. So I won't, I won't lie. On the 11th day, I began to do what they call self-recovery. Now, taking my mind off these things gradually. So I began to work on my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, because when you're the first thing that kills is fear. It's fear. So the third day, that was, the third day was the first time I could perceive. Mm -hmm. Because every sense organ ceases to function at that point. Mm -hmm. So I could perceive and I, I could eat. On the 13th day, I could walk without anybody holding me to the bathroom because everything failed. Like if you're bringing food to my room, I'll think you want to kill me. That was how much I hated food at that point. Not wow. everything seemed to me. You know, and on the 13th day, I, I regained strength. I was able to turn on my phone and I, I talked to my family and I'm like, no worries, guys, I'm fine now. But on the 15th day, I regained self consciousness and then they came back for a test. And on the 16th day, they brought the result and became negative. Wow. Here's the thing. Let me not shock you. It's not really about me. Because I've conquered it, and I'm not taking chances. Like every day, look at okay, this money. I got my things. I got here. I take every four hours because I don't. There's no way. It's not written anywhere that once you once you have this thing, you can't contact again. I don't yes. want to take any risk. Yes. But that's a sign. It's not about me right now because I'm fine. It's about the people back home. who won't believe the day I was discharged. I put a call through my cousin and I asked him where he was. This young man was at the at, at the beer parlor at the bar drinking. Wow. And I asked him, "What are you doing there?" He said, uh, "He's just hanging out no there." When I just recovered first morning. That was when he picked his car keys and ran back home. That oh, now that my cousin has it, I won't come out again. So Nigeria, Nigeria as a country, a cost is a cost because it's more like a bless, a cost than a blessing. Ignorance kills faster than death itself. Hmm. Hmm. We argue too much. We are, we are too blind. Like that's the problem. Now we are underdeveloped. The system is faulty. Mm -hmm. All of these countries are developed. They are, they are well westernized mm -hmm. and they are fighting provide this thing. And we in Nigeria, that there are no facilities, there are no equipment to curb. We are here saying we are corona. I bet you I'm really scared. Now that they've released Nigerians, I am telling you the virus has spread more. And you you know somebody said something on the voice note for over seven months when this entire spreading. The guy said that Nigerians will die so much. I'm really scared for us because it's ignorance. A man that is well informed will know how to curtail all of these things before death. But a man that argues that there's still death everywhere. I had to, I've been doing programs for the past one week on my Instagram. I've been connecting with all of the celebrity friends to talk to the people that this thing is real. Mm -hmm. Then I had to call a friend who contacted me. She's actually in Yaba um, Exhibition Center. I told her to help me switch on her camera on Instagram Live so people could see that this is real. When they now saw her, they said, Oh, so there's actually a patient in Nigeria. People are, people, people are wow. so, they are so mean. Wow. And the girl was like, for 22 days and she's there to recover. Wow. Wow. Okay. So I'm scared. Wow. Um, Jimobi, thank you for sharing with us your story. And, you know, we are glad that you're well and you're not taking any chances. More importantly, you raised a very valid point. People need to know that right now we don't have a cure, we don't have a vaccine. And the fact that you've gotten well from it, you've recovered, does not mean that your body has built immune system. There's no research to support that. So one can reconfirm, um, re- um, contracted. There have been cases where we've heard of reactivation of the virus and we are asking, what does that even mean? But this is someone that has tested negative twice, all of a sudden, after a while, we find that the person has been maybe exposed again. And it's not even a new strain, it's sort of like a reactivation of a dormant strain. Now let's talk about, um, you know, from your space, where you are right now, what, what is the environment like? Because here in Nigeria, the lockdown has been eased, but from the reports we get, 
life has almost returned back to normal. What is it like in the UK? Give us a vivid picture of the Just hold on for me. I have my camera stand for you. This is the street of London. How does it look? Hmm. Empty. Empty. Wow. That is it. Wow. That is it. This this is how it has been. Everybody's been careful, but Nigerians are too stuck. I don't know what we want. It's madness. Everybody, nobody goes out here. The only thing you do is you are given a meter inch from everybody. This one is not about, they're not, I tell people, the government, they're not asking you to stay home for them. It's for your own self. Mm. So you have to, you have to adhere strictly to these things. It's, it's a meter away from go to the shops to buy stuff. You're wearing your gloves and all that. Because I was, at, at some point, I started wondering how I contacted it because I was too careful. You know, mm. but in my apartment, when you're coming up, you're using your car to enter into a lift. And in that lift, I'm not alone. I'm never alone. Probably yes. four or five people. Yes. You know? You're resting your hands on the back house inside the lift. When you're buying stuff, from the same basket you use, and that person has actually dropped. Mm. At car, we're all sending our car at the same time. So, you know, it's, it's crazy. I won't lie. And according to what we heard, all of the, we're hearing different informations as regards this ailment. Some will say it's airborne. Some will say it can't survive for more than eight hours. Some will so we don't really know what it is. So whatever it is, I think extreme consciousness is very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, mm -hmm. the, your, your friends who were in the house with you, did any of them have to, because we know that sometimes people who are in close spaces of those who have contracted at risk, did yeah. you, did you know of anyone you actively infected? Or did you... When, when, the, the paramedics, when the paramedics came, the first thing they said was, where's the man that conducted CPR on him? That's when I was touching my chest and all that. Mm -hmm. So the said, as well to do the same thing. And not just him, the other people in the house I did the same thing as myself. They all paper for rock, paracetamol as well. So they were doing the same thing I was doing. Everybody was teaming at the same time. Mm. So we're all fine now. Mm. But we didn't, have, we didn't have to wait for the symptom. Because mm. obviously they've had it. Yeah, yeah. And and, and 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 like you said in your previous conversation, that uh, because the hospitals are also overwhelmed, they advise that everybody should uh, isolate from home. You should, you should just be in your house for those period of time, right? Yes. Mm. Amazing. Less Get to that point, like mine, where you find it difficult to breathe, that's when they'll take you to the hospital, because what are you going to have to do? There's no cure. Mm. And now, it, it, you know what they advise not to even go to the hospital is when you get there, yours might be, let's say, percentage-wise, 40%. Now, when you get to the hospital, so, the it's next person to you might have... Like an 80 or 100, you know? Yeah. And the next minute, he's dead. You look mm. at your leg, the next person is dead. So the fear will kill you as well. Mm. Mm. So what you don't see will kill you. It's advisable you stay home, isolate, and be fine. Okay, Jimabi, mm -hmm. before we let you go, final words mm -hmm. to everyone watching you who, you know, we, we've been talking about coronavirus and how many carriers are even asymptomatic. They're not showing symptoms, but they're also endangering the lives of those around them. People who still feel it's okay to go out, have fun with friends. What are your final words? Um, like I said, I've been here and I won't stop saying, oh, I I'm just scared for my people, trust me. Now, uh, I'll be very, I saw the Yaba Isolation Center uh, and I'm really impressed, like, very neat, the, the air condition. And I asked her, the light flow, how did they feed you guys? And she said, at times, you're not from plantain and all that. Mm. Fantastic. You know? But uh, it's not even about that. It's about my people. I beg you guys, Nigerians, if you're watching me right now, probably in that crowd form or whatever, I beg you in the name of God. Use me as a testimony. I survived this. God gave me a second chance. Let me tell you guys the truth. Now, you know, we hear every time that there's a thin line between life and death. Mm. At that point, it's I'm a jewelry freak. All of my gold meant nothing to me. I just wanted my breath back. Mm. Nothing mattered. So I beg you guys, I, you need to stay alive for yourself. You need to stay alive for your family and your friends. This thing is real. Be cautious. I mean, adhere to those regulations. There are nine rules by the NBC, the NCDC when you're, when, you're out, when you're going out. There are 12 rules to be adhered to when you're inside the house. So it's not about them. It's about them. I beg you in God's name. Some mm. are saying, uh, they pay back for the rich. Why are they hearing about and all that because the rich can afford to do the medication I mean to test themselves. The rich can afford to call the NCDC to come to the house and test them. Who we the who are we gonna call? Nobody mm. apart from God. Nobody cares about you when it happens. Where are the funds that have been taken of us? Now in the UK, I'm telling you we're about returning to Nigeria and they're asking us to pay for isolation here before they get flights for, to move us from here. That's how messed up we are in a Nigerian country where other countries are being responsible for their own people. We have been asked to pay for isolation from here. I did a return ticket. I'm paying for fresh tickets. It's unfortunate. Hmm. So it means nobody cares about Even if they don't care about it, because the government, they are sending flights, flights to rescue us, and we are paying for return tickets. When I have my return ticket already, I'm paying for that ticket again, and I'm paying for 14 days isolation from here. Because the Nigerians, when they get back home, they will never pay.
So it's unfortunate. So nobody cares about you. If you think the government will come for you, they will come for you. I'm being realistic. So come for yourself first by being safe. Hmm. 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 All right. Thank you very much, uh, Jumabi, for being with us and sharing your experience and encouraging uh, Nigerians where they are. They really appreciate this conversation where we get with you. And uh, we believe, say, uh, Nigerians where they watch, they will see, say, this thing is real and uh, you are a living testimony of someone who had survived the coronavirus. Thank you very much, Rami. Thank you for being on the show. I appreciate you. I have goosebumps everywhere. <laughs> it's 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 quite uh, it's quite an eye opener. I would say this this one uh, eye opener. <laughs> so for everybody that say oh government is trying to use it to scam, uh -huh. hopefully this will serve as a a note mm -hmm. a note of warning that it is real. People are dying. At least now you've seen someone that has survived it. Yes. And one thing that he has learned from coronavirus is how to take his health more seriously. How to exercise, work out. When we called him, he was 